What's going on, guys? Back at it again with another episode of Sipping with Samurai Piggy. And before we go on, I would just like to ask if you wouldn't mind, I would greatly appreciate it to please like, subscribe, share with your friends, let them know what we're doing, let them know what we're drinking. And today we are drinking Daisy Cutter. It is a pale ale from our friends at Half Acre Brewing Company. So before we get into the beer, you know, I always like to talk about the brewery if I haven't done so before and I haven't talked about these guys. So we're going to get into that. Then we'll get into the beer, the type of beer, and then we'll drink the beer, the most important part. So Half Acre Beer Company, they have two breweries and they are on the north side of Chicago. They brew classic American micro styles and weighted barrel offerings and wild beers that traverse the landscape of mixed fermentation. Their aim is to brew technically raw beer for the collective odyssey. So the first brewery that they built, that was back in 2008, and that was their Lincoln Brewery. And it houses their retail shop, a tap room with a full kitchen and a brew house. The second one that they built was their Balmoral Brewery. That was built in 2015, and that granted them the opportunity to further their abilities in, 2000, in September of 2017 when they opened that one and they opened the tap room and garden. So that one also has a kitchen and beer list as well. So let's talk about the one that started it all, the Lincoln Brewery. So that is a 13,000 square foot building that was being used as a warehouse, office, and makeshift dwelling and became their brewery in 2008. They, with the equipment they purchased secondhand and driven home from Colorado, they built one of the first production breweries in Chicago had seen in a long time. After working hard and improving their skills as brewers, they pushed the building to its limit and reached capacity in 2012. They then set out to build a second brewery, and since introducing their Balmoral Brewery in 2015, they've been able to implement a brewing program on Lincoln Avenue that focuses on experimentation and mixed fermentation. Lincoln has a retail shop where they sell the beer, apparel, and other goods as well. It has the original tap room where they have a kitchen and full food menu. Now that leads us to the Balmoral Brewery. So that one is their facility on Balmoral and it's an, that was an opportunity to expand their capabilities. They built that one in 2015 and Balmoral actually finds a different level of detail and reach. With a building spanning 60,000 square feet, they have an interior space and an additional outdoor area. They are able to grow relative to their creative ambition. So they, have, they had a lot more room to expand, which they did. And now they're just playing along and doing, doing their thing, which you got to give it up to them. That's awesome because they're still an independent brewery. And you know how I love my independent breweries. So that brings us to the Daisy Cutter. So this one actually we tried for the first time yesterday and Madi had a field day with it. She loved this beer. We took a four pack home and um, she's actually allowing me to open this one tonight. So the Daisy Cutter is a pale ale and that was actually one of the first beers that they brewed at the brewery on Lincoln Avenue. It began as a special release bomber beer but caught fire both in and outside the brewery. At the time in 2009 there were some local pale ales that hit with natural power but not many. Daisy Cutter's lush and dank characteristics steadily carved out a place with the Chicago brewing landscape. Today, the Daisy Cutter is a call brand that we continue to keep raw and relevant. They blended pine, citrus, papaya, and mango, and they have a dank, apparent biscuit, lingering, obscenely dry taste. 5.2% ABV. So, now we know about the beer, about their beer, let's learn about the general style of beer. So, this is an American Pale Ale. And again, like the IPA, the pale ale was uh, British in origin. And this style is now popular worldwide. And what they do is they use the uh, variances in character from region to region. So different places brew pale ales differently. So the American versions tend to be cleaner and hoppier with a piney citrus cascade variety. And the British ones typically tend to have a more malty, buttery, aromatic, and balanced flavor, and scent. The pale ale is ranging color from deep gold to medium amber. They are, the fruity esters and diacetyl can vary from none to moderate. 
And the hop aroma can range from lightly floral to bold and pungent. And in general, you should expect a good balance of caramel malt and excessive hops with a medium body and a mildly bitter finish. So the typical pale ale, American pale ale, is 4.5 to 6.5% ABV. So this one at 5.2 lands kind of right there in the middle. So, and they're typically, I be in the bitterness range, they're 25 to 50. And you typically drink these out of a pint glass. So, I mean, obviously I don't have a pint glass now because I'm just gonna do a little taster, but you would typically drink it out of a pint glass. So, I think I've talked enough about the beer and the brewery, it's time to drink. I didn't really get a feel for it yesterday because, you know, Monty just gave me one sip and then she stole it from me, so we're gonna try it today. So, gorgeous color and very carbonated, as you can see. Has some nice head retention. And it is a, like a, I'll give it a golden amber. It's like a little, like a rust, like a tarnished gold. Oof. Dank, dank, dank. Like super, like it's, you, you really get the notes of the hops, but it's not like aggressive. So you get like a resiny, you get like, you get, you do get the pine, you do get that citrus and the mango is evident. Like it is there on the nose. Ooh. Wow. That is a great finish to a great beer. So what I like about this is it is a little bit more on the aromatics to where you think like as soon as you sip it it's gonna kill you but it doesn't it's it finishes clean or it finishes crisp like very refreshing you get the, like a nice ester on the back of your tongue and as i'm talking like those bitter the the bitterness those, those hops are like kind of dancing on my tongue so what i appreciate about it is that everything you got on the nose you get on the tongue as well so i do get a hit of that mango i do get that pine, I do get that like resinous, that bitterness. It's mwah. this is a very easy drinking pale ale, and I would, if I was blind, if I was like blind guessing, and I didn't know the percentage, I would. It it's it's typical to the body. Like I would probably guess around like a five, five and a half. It. It doesn't hide it, but it's not like overbearing. So it's very clean, refreshing, easy drinking. I shouldn't say clean because clean is more lager, but you know what I mean? It's, it's a very crisp and refreshing pale ale. So I could definitely just stay drinking this. Like I, I'll, I'll kill that four pack. I got, I got four 16s and I, I, I would kill those. I would kill those 16s. It is a very easy drinking beer. Delicious in, I mean, thumbs up. Dope job, High Fiker. I mean, I can see why this, this, this one kind of put you on the map. If, if I believe that, that this one kind of got you guys out there. Very easy drinking, great pale ale. And as far as tastings, what would I pair this with? Okay, so I would definitely. I wouldn't go for because you do get a, a you do get that that the malt plays a, a it plays a part in this as well. It's not like you know super hop forward. Like you definitely get the hops, but then you have that nice bread like aftertaste, like that bready malt aftertaste. So I wouldn't go for a dessert with this one, and I wouldn't necessarily go for a ceviche on this one because I don't know I just feel like I wouldn't really like that the that aesthetic vinegar with this style of of pale ale but I would definitely pair this with Mediterranean food I feel like you know my homeland has a bunch of offers that you could throw up with this and it'd be great shawarma I think falafel would be great with this uh you know, you got the hummus, the pita bread, all that good stuff. I think that would go great with this. 
I would definitely go Mexican, uh, tacos, al pastor. I would go carnitas. I would go the, the, the shredded meat. I would go fish tacos. I think fish tacos would be amazing with this. I would go not for the, like those oily fatty fishes, but kind of like, like clean fillets. Like I would go just like a white fish, like a, like a nice, uh, charred or like, uh, barbecued uh fish i think that'd be great with this and oh i would definitely go spicy i would maybe go with indian food i think that'd be bomb with this or i would even go mm, yeah i think that, that, that's what i go with yeah dope stuff great job half acre love this i can't wait to try the rest of your stuff and yeah so i'm gonna go finish this and Guys, before I go, I just want to say thank you so much. I can't preach. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys tuning in. It means the world. And before we go, you know, I always like to give love. So let's see who we have with us today. Oh, got my dude Cheech. What's going on, brother? Beer Tales, how's it going, dudes? Little Mari, of course, my love. Maritza, how's it going? More heart than scars. What's going on, guys? Mr. PB and J. I'll see you Sunday, bro. Thanks for sending those uh, eggplants. Dulce Pescado, Pe Pecado, how's it going? JML Athletics, how you guys doing? Florida Beer Buds, what's going on, boys? Again, guys, thank you. Can't tell you how much I appreciate it. It means the world that you would just join me watching me talk about beer. And yes, please also join me on all my social medias. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, YouTube, Facebook, kind of all over the place. So you know, just look up Thursday Samurai Piggy. I'm sure you can find me somewhere. And yeah. So, I'm going to go finish drinking this. I hope you guys have a great night. Have some fun with your family, your friends. Please let me know if there's any beers or brews you'd like me to check out or review. I would be more than happy to. Some upcoming ones we got are Weldworks, Prairie Ales, Barrel of Monks, uh, again, Crooked Stave. Did I say Weldworks? I think I did say Weldworks. Burial. We, Crooked, uh, we got a bunch of people coming through. So... I'm excited. I hope you're excited. And yeah, please have a great night. Till the next time, guys, drink some dope beers. And yeah, cheers. I do have someone coming up next to that. That's actually sitting in the fridge. Maybe tomorrow. We'll see. Bye, guys. <laughs>